a party-going woman inherits the castle owned by her estranged mother, unaware that within its walls is something sinister that could bring the world to darkness. Lavinia Watley prays before an altar but is interrupted when she hears growling. She grabs a whip and heads to a room downstairs where she feeds a feral creature some meat. The creature hands some of the meat to Lavinia, but she whips it viciously, saying its fate is in God's hands. She returns to the altar and bears herself before it to flog herself while a man watches from the shadows. Some time later, the man frees the creature who heads to the altar, only to see that the woman had passed away. The creature mourns for her before destroying her body and the altar she worshipped. Afterward, the creature sees its grotesque form in the mirror and smashes the glass. Elsewhere, Rebecca Riley meets her boyfriend John who's talking to Shelly at a club. She glares at the other woman to make her leave, and John is appeased to see her jealousy. Among the crowd, the professor explains to his group about the notion of the multiverse. Larry asks why nobody has heard of it, so the professor mutters that the government hides them. Hearing this, Chuck talks about lizard people, who can look like normal humans. Shelly comments how weird this conversation is, which signals John to leave. He takes a big swig of Larry's drink, but Rebecca stops him midway and takes him to his car. The woman offers to drive since John's drunk, but he insists. Because of this, John struggles to drive straight and ends up crashing the vehicle. At sunrise, John finds Rebecca panicking as she can't see. Months later, a blind Rebecca jolts awake inside a car as they make their way to the rural roads of Albania. Soon, they reach their destination where Marku, the attendant, welcomes the two to Watley Castle. Marku leads them inside and Rebecca is in disbelief belief that her mother used to own the castle. The man adds that her mother, Lavinia, owned the castle after her father died of heart complications. This is a shock to her since Rebecca thought her mother gave her up for adoption because she was poor. Learning this, Marco explains that Lavinia was a recluse, so she might have thought it'd be better for her daughter to live in America. Now that she's passed away, Rebecca is the new owner of the castle. John mentions that they plan to sell it, but Marco assures them that they should appreciate living in the castle. As the two talk, Rebecca hears a distant and snarling but the men don't notice. The attendant then tours John around the castle, leaving Rebecca alone. Outside, Marku offers to help John sell the place and furnishings, but the boyfriend assures him that their friends will come over to look at the place and help out. John then asks how Lavinia perished, and Marku hints that she flogged herself to death. John wonders if that would put off buyers, but the attendant is confident that eccentrics are interested in buying old castles. He then asks Marku not to tell Rebecca about how Lavinia passed away before running back. That night, as the two prepare for bed, Rebecca mutters that she wants to talk to Marku about her mother. The boyfriend leans against it, saying things are weird enough already. This dampens her mood, so he reminds her that their friends will arrive soon. However, this doesn't cheer her up as she sees their friends as people who they partied with. She doesn't want that lifestyle anymore since it nearly killed her, so John promises that they won't drink nor use party medications. John then tries to initiate intimacy, but she rejects him. The man sighs and wishes that she can eventually forgive him for the accident. As they sleep, Rebecca gets unsettling dreams of her mother whipping herself and a ritual where a man calls for Yog sothoth while Lavinia is bound on a slab. A voice whispers that he'll find her daughter, which wakes Rebecca just as a hand slinks away from the door. In the morning, John cooks breakfast when he pauses, absorbed in his thoughts until Rebecca shows up. She mentions her nightmare, so John promises that the castle won't seem scary when their friends arrive. Later that day, the two continue touring the castle, leading to John noticing that that every mirror they find is broken. They eventually reach an ornate room with carved stone walls and a gargoyle statue. Eventually, they pass by a wine cellar, but John doesn't mention it to Rebecca, though he is clearly interested in the bottles. They then reach an altar where John finds the whip Lavinia used. Despite not seeing it, Rebecca starts feeling anxious and asks to go somewhere else. In Lavinia's old room, John opens a closet and gets spooked by flies. Rebecca asks to try one of her mother's dresses, so the man picks a red robe and comments about the smell inside. Unbeknownst to them, the creature is hiding behind the clothes inside the closet. As she touches one of her mother's dresses, Rebecca mourns for the woman she never met. The next day, Marku visits, so Rebecca uses this opportunity to talk to him. She asks about her father, but Marku doesn't know anything about him. He then tries to convince her not to sell the castle, reasoning that he grew up there. Sympathizing with his sentiment, Rebecca promises to consider it. While sleeping later, Rebecca sees visions of her mother again. This time, she finds Lavinia using the handle of the whip to satisfy herself while the creature watches. Unbeknownst to her, the same creature approaches her bed. Rebecca suddenly gasps awake, telling John that someone else was in the 
other room. Because of this, they moved to the living room with Rebecca wearing her mother's robe for comfort. She insists that she felt someone touch her earlier, but John assures her that there's no one else in the castle. Still, she asks what her mother's robe color was since she saw that it was red in her dreams. Not wanting to freak her out further, John lies that it's blue. He then reminds her that once they sell the castle, they'll have a ton of money and a great future together. He then apologizes, still guilty about the accident that took her vision. In the dark, the creature observes them as their interaction turns intimate. With that, the creature satisfies itself and scurries off. The next morning, John wakes up to Rebecca cooking breakfast by herself. She started feeling confident after their time together, so she's decided to sell the castle as soon as possible so they can move on with their lives. Later in the afternoon, however, John returns to the wine cellar and is happy to find century-old wine bottles. Meanwhile in the kitchen, Rebecca hears snarling through the walls. She follows the sound and reaches the ornate room room but ends up bumping into the gargoyle statue which wounds her. She falls on the floor, but before the statue can fall on her, the creature yanks it away. Rebecca sobs from the pain and the creature tries to console her. When John finally reaches her, the creature's gone. The man patches up Rebecca's wound as she mutters about sensing someone else in the castle. John dismisses it as squirrels, but she insists on leaving and let Marku sell this castle for them. However, John doesn't trust Marku and adds that they can't have their friends arrive at an empty castle. He also insists on not passing up the opportunity for them to become rich. Frustrated, he goes to look around to secure the place. John goes into another room and decides to call Marku. He tells him that he's stressed and indirectly asks the man for some medication. The man simply says he'll send some. That night, while the two clean up, John excuses himself. Rebecca begs him not to leave her alone, but he lies and says he already searched the whole castle and found no one around. While alone, Rebecca suddenly hears her mother's whispers. Following it leads her to discover an old tomb inside the closet. Elsewhere, John meets with a doctor who offers some pharmaceuticals. After the purchase, the doctor asks to partake of his own goods and the privacy of the castle. John declines at first, but when the man implies that he has a gun, he relents and leaves the merchant alone. John then takes some of the goods before joining Rebecca, who's trying to investigate the book. He reads the pages for her and describes that it's in another language with morbid images. Meanwhile, the doctor enjoys the effects of his supply and sees the creature approach. Thinking it's a hallucination, the man talks talks to it casually. However, the creature takes his syringe and stabs him with it. Upstairs, John inspects the morbid book but is only interested in selling it. Rebecca wonders if Marku can help translate it, but John says the professor can do it for them. The next day, Marku finds the couple's friends finally arriving, though he hides behind some bushes upon seeing them. John greets the group and leads them inside, where Rebecca joins them. Shelly greets Rebecca, but the blind woman isn't too happy that she's there. Switching topics, John asks the professor to look at the book. The professor examines it and quickly determines that it's likely the Necronomicon, a grimoire of spells. He explains that a worldwide cult follows the ways of the book, but John just wants to know how much they can sell it. To his delight, his friend replies that it's priceless. Meanwhile, Shelly goes to the bathroom and lays in a bathtub. As she relaxes with some wine, Marku watches her from behind the walls. He then goes to the altar and takes the whip before searching for the mysterious creature, only to be ambushed by it. Elsewhere, the professor describes the contents of the book to Rebecca, pointing out pages about the dark gods like Yog sothoth John exclaims that he doesn't care and just wants to sell the thing, but both the professor and Rebecca are against it. Frustrated, John storms off to consume his pharmaceuticals. He later goes to Rebecca to apologize for being a jerk. She accepts, but the professor interrupts them, asking Rebecca to take him where she found the book. Rebecca guides the professor to the closet in her mother's room, but as he searches it, the woman suddenly gets visions of Lavinia being cornered and taken advantage of by her grandfather. Meanwhile, John and the rest of his friends head to a shop in town to sell things from the castle. The store owner immediately declines, saying that everything in that castle is evil. She shares how the town believed that the evil ended when Lavinia perished, but their cattle still gets eaten alive at night. She dreads that the demon spawn has returned and urges the man to leave the castle. John's undeterred by this, so the woman warns him about dark forces in that castle. Men then gather by the windows to peer at the newcomers, but the woman yells at the crowd, prompting the group to leave. In an effort to get to the bottom of things, John calls the estate manager and learns that the castle isn't on the market, and that Marku isn't assigned to be the property's caretaker. Unbeknownst to them, Marku is chained as the creature feeds on the doctor's body. The grotesque being tries to feed his guest as well, but when he rejects it, it bites him and leaves. Later on, John is frustrated that his friends are using substances in front of his girlfriend, asserting that she can sense these things despite being blind. 
However, they disregard it. While they enjoy themselves, the professor tells Rebecca how cults want to bring the old gods back into this world. The woman suspects that her grandfather is part of these cults. Hearing them, John snaps at the professor, insisting that this talk about cults is nonsense. Rebecca wonders what's wrong and her boyfriend claims he's just tired. The woman snaps back, pointing out that she's also dealing with this issue while being blind at the same time. John points out that he's been there for her, but she argues that he doesn't even listen to her when she says there's someone in the walls, unlike the professor who's willing to listen and learn. Shelly hears it and freaks out, but John dismisses it as hysteria. This offends Rebecca, so she shoves John, declaring that her life is a mystery and he should back off if he can't help her solve it. The blind woman then marches off with the professor, leaving John to wallow in guilt. Shelly uses this change to soothe John and flirt with him, offering him some wine to wash down the stress. During this, the creature watches them behind the walls. Rebecca and the professor head to Lavinia's room to check the closet again. She asks for her mother's robe and the man asks if it's the red one, confirming that John lied to her before. As the professor investigates the closet, he discovers a secret passage. He goes in and Rebecca follows while wearing her mother's robes. Meanwhile, John and the rest party while drinking the old wine bottles. John appreciates Shelley's carefree ways, prompting the woman to ask for a tour of the castle. Understanding what she really wants, he takes Shelley's offer. Along the castle's hidden halls, Rebecca and the professor hear a snarl, which the woman confirms is what she heard before. Meanwhile, Shelley and John enjoy each other passionately. They find shackles on a bed's headboard and the woman playfully shackles and blindfolds her partner. She tosses the keys before having her way with him, all while the creature watches from a closet. Seeing an opportunity, the creature sneaks and twists Shelley's neck, ending the woman. Completely unaware, John is in bliss, even as the grotesque creature takes Shelley's place. After the deed, John cries for help, thinking that Shelley left him cuffed and blindfolded. Eventually, Larry and Chuck arrive to release him. To their horror, they also find Shelley's body. Horrified, John dresses up and swears to end this nonsense. In the castle's dungeon, Rebecca and the professor find the creature's lair and its notebooks. From it, they learn that Lavinia's father allowed himself to be possessed by a monster, which used his body to impregnate Lavinia. Its children would be able to open the gate to let the old ones return. She bore twin girls, with one bearing the mark of the monster and the other unknown, so Lavinia separated them. Meanwhile, John and his friends search the castle and eventually hear Marku crying for help. They free the bound man while Chuck finds the doctor's gun. Marku frantically exclaims that they have to stop the creature and get out of the castle, but John declares that the property is his, so he won't let the creature run him out. He then rallies the three and cracks the whip to begin hunting down the creature. Inside the lair, Rebecca tries to make sense of her grandfather's actions, thinking he brainwashed Lavinia just to use her. The professor thinks otherwise and suggests they leave. Outside, the townsfolk start hearing whispers from the sky, with one of them muttering that it's the prophecy. Because of this, they head to the castle. Inside, John and the the three head to the altar and collect the weapons from the chest. They agree to split up to hunt the creature down, and John inhales a stimulant before storming out. In the inner walls, Rebecca and the professor traverse a narrow tunnel when they hear shouting. The professor leaves to investigate, and while Rebecca's alone, the creature slowly approaches. She turns to it and realizes that it's her sister. As they touch hands, she hears Lavinia's voice stopping her and flinches, causing the creature to flee. Elsewhere, Chuck and Larry search another part of the castle, only to be ambushed by the beast. In another tunnel, the professor discovers a glowing red room where he finds the creature writhing. He approaches cautiously and opens the book before her, asking her to reveal Yogg Sothoth to him. The creature convulses and a tentacle suddenly whips out of her belly and strangles the professor. Despite the asphyxiation, he smiles and declares that he can see it all. Meanwhile, Rebecca convulses as she sees visions of her mother laying on a stone slab. Before her, two hooded worshippers guided a monstrous looking man towards her. A distorted appendage then burst out of its belly and planted its essence inside her. Rebecca breaks out of the vision and runs. Elsewhere, John manically hunts the creature but Marku suddenly hits his leg with a spiked mace. He then reveals that he was ordered by Yogg Sothoth to unite the sisters, so he had to end Lavinia to keep her from interfering. He proclaims the glory of the old god and raises his mace to end John. 
However, the creature tackles him and finishes him off, giving John time to escape. The man heads outside to a clearing and shouts to challenge the creature. She appears and they trade blows. John manages to bring her down to the ground, but the beast hits him before he can strike again. With John down, the creature picks the mace up, but Rebecca reaches them. Suddenly, both her and the creature convulse, giving John an opportunity to grab the mace and hit the creature repeatedly. Rebecca breaks from the trance and yells for John to stop, revealing that the creature is her sister. Despite this, he tosses the mace and picks the whip up. Furious, he exclaims that they're both freaks before lashing Rebecca with a whip. This forces the woman to defend herself and hit him with a mace. The woman recoils at what she'd done. Her sister, however, crushes John's head out of rage and beckons Rebecca to follow her. Elsewhere, the professor emerges from the castle with a book. The sky tears open into otherworldly colors as the townsfolk gather before the castle. The professor declares that the prophecy is complete and shouts for Rebecca and her sister to join hands. The creature takes Rebecca's hand and raises it to the sky as the image of a dark god manifests before them. Rebecca wails in agony as blood gushes from her and she births Yogg Sothoth into the mortal realm. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.